Welcome. I am Terry Tropin, and today I'm presenting a lesson on medical decision making, a component of CPT's evaluation and management codes. First, let me introduce myself. I have a master's in healthcare administration informatics from the University of Maryland Global Campus and have RHIA and CCSP certifications. Also, I'm an AHIMA approved ICD 10 trainer. I have taught health information technology at Montgomery College for over 20 years. <clears throat> I also have written books on coding. These books are study guides that summarize the complicated coding guidelines. My books include one on ENM coding, ICD 10 CM coding, ICD 10 PCS, and external classes. These are available on Amazon. Here is a summary of what I'm going to talk about in this video. First of all, what is medical decision making? Then I'm going to describe each element that is used in defining the level of medical decision making. And then compare the elements across different levels to see why is something straightforward or why is something at a different level. And then put all the elements together to determine the level of medical decision making. What is medical decision making? Medical decision making often referred to as MDM, so you don't have to say the whole thing every time. It's a component of most evaluation and management codes, which are abbreviated as E slash M. So we have MDM, medical decision making, E slash M, evaluation and management. E and M codes are used to report the services spent, the time spent examining the patient, documenting the information and provider needs to determine the diagnosis and our management for a specific case. Each level of E&M code is determined by the amount of work involved in determining a patient's diagnosis or how to manage their condition. The more work, the higher level, the higher payment. Most levels of E&M codes are determined by MDM, history, physical examination, and possibly time. So again, what is medical decision making? MDM is the mental work a provider does to determine a patient's diagnosis or how to manage the patient's condition. It is based on the provider's years of medical training and experience. And of course, it varies by the type of problem the patient has, how much data must be reviewed to evaluate the patient and figure out how to manage the condition and the risk of problems arising from treatment. Note that medical decision making is used differently in different e and codes. For office outpatient visits, 99202-99215, MDM is used with time to determine the level of the A&M code. For most other codes, MDM is used along with patient's history, physical exam, to determine the level of the A&M code. Sometimes time is used in these two. These differences will be discussed in future videos. So medical decision making includes these three levels straightforward, low, moderate, and high. The level depends on the patient's condition, the amount and type of data reviewed, and the risk of complication. The more numerous or the more complicated these elements are, the higher the level of medical decision making. This, of course, affects the level of E&M service being reported and the payment for the service. The level of medical decision making is determined by three distinct elements the number of complexity of problems addressed, the diagnosis or symptoms, signs that are being looked at during a particular encounter, the amount and a complexity of data to be reviewed and analyzed, this is tests, medical records, other information, and the risk of complications, morbidity, mortality arising from patient management. We will discuss each of these in detail. First, let's define test. You know what a test is, but CPT has very specifically defined the term. Tests are mentioned at all levels of medical decision making. So a test is imaging, lab, psychometric, or physiologic data. A test may include ordering, performing, and or interpreting diagnostic tests and studies. The guidelines specifically state that a clinical lab panel such as a basic metabolic panel 80047 is a single test, even though it includes a number of different items within the panel. 
The guidelines also specifically state that pulse oximetry is not counted as a test. It also says do not use this to determine medical decision making if the service is included in another code being reported. A unique test, think of it as a single um, one test, separate test. So these count as one unique test. If there are multiple results of the same unique test, it's counted as one. For example, if a physician does a number of blood glucose tests and then compares them, that's counted as one. So see, to see the changes over time, it still counts as one. Now, if a unique test is ordered and the results reviewed during the same or different visits, it's still counted as one. You don't get a point for ordering it and a point for analyzing the results. Now, the test may have overlapping elements, even if there are distinct CPT codes for the elements, and you're, you cannot count each element as a separate test. Tests are part of two elements amount and our complexity of data and risk of complications and our morbidity mortality. However, tests are mentioned at all levels of medical decision making. So let's look at the first element of medical of MDM, the number and complexity of problems addressed, meaning the conditions or signs or symptoms that are looked at during a visit. The picture shows all of these elements considered by the provider that are funneled into his or her brain. And out of that comes the number and complexity of problems addressed. So here are the levels, straightforward, low, moderate, and high. So for straightforward, we have one self-limited or minor. If it's, that's straightforward. If it's two self-limited or minor, that takes you up to low. Now, self-limited or minor are only part of straightforward or low. Also part of low, however, is one stable chronic illness. If it's two or more stable chronic illness, it bumps it up to moderate. If it's one or more chronic illnesses with severe exacerbation, that's high. If it's one chronic illness with exacerbation, that's moderate. So high is severe exacerbation. Moderate is just exacerbation, progression, side effects. Okay. So if it's acute, uncomplicated is low. If it's um, complicated, it's moderate. If it's a uh, threat to life or bodily function, it's high. So you can see from these the progression that self-limited or minor, one, that's straightforward. A little bit more, two, self-limited or minor, that's low. Um, also low is uncomplicated, chronic, stable, chronic, if one. If it's more than one, it goes into moderate. If it's uh, severe exacerbation, it's high. So you can see that each one of these um, is a little bit more complicated than the one before. So what's the definition of the terms minimal problem and self-limited or minor problem? CPT loves to define everything very, very specifically so there can be no question about what they mean. A minor problem is a problem that may not even need a healthcare provider. Um, the service is supervised by a physician or qualified health professional, but doesn't require that they be actually there, very minor. A self-limited or minor problem is one that runs a definite prescribed course, is transient, it's gonna go away, not likely to permanently alter health status, okay? These terms are used only in straightforward and low levels of MDM. If you get more than something other than minimal self-limited minor problem, you're not going to use straightforward R um, for, at all. So here are some definitions for chronic illness. A chronic illness has um, expected duration of at least a year, 
or until the death of the patient. Conditions are considered chronic whether or not the stage of severity of the condition changes over time. For example, if uncontrolled diabetes is treated to become controlled diabetes, it's still a single chronic condition. Okay. A stable chronic condition means the patient is meeting the treatment goals for the condition. So the patient had hypertension, they're being treated for hypertension, and it's well under control. Therefore, it's considered stable. And you'll see this in low and moderate levels of medical decision making. On the other hand, if it's not stable, chronic condition with exacerbation, progression, or side effects of treatment being it's getting worse and they need to change, alter, increase the care, but it does not require hospitalization, that's moderate. If that chronic disease is considered severe and may require hospital care, then it's high. So again, you can see the difference between the low, moderate, high, the kind of progression of how, um, getting more serious as it goes along. So here's definitions for acute illness. An acute illness or injury is a recent or recent new short-term problem, low risk of morbidity, little or no risk of mortality, expect Full recovery. This is uncomplicated. It includes a problem that's normally self-limited or minor, but in this case, it's not resolving as expected under the usual treatment. Um, example is cystitis, allergic rhinitis, simple sprain. This is low MDM. So if the acute injury is complicated, um, it's defined as moderate medical decision making. So in this case, the injury requires evaluation of related body systems. So if you have a uh, injury to the stomach, the physician may want to look at the liver, the pancreas, the intestine to see if um, that is different, if that is a problem, or maybe other conditions, other abdominal organs. Uh, it's maybe an extensive injury may include multiple treatment options. So a lot of things to decide between we can do this or we can do this or we can do this, and that makes it moderate. So an acute illness with systemic complications, systemic symptoms, is systemic symptoms, high risk of morbidity without treatment. So again, this takes it higher. And here's some example, pyelonephritis, pneumonitis, colitis. Now, just to make this clear, you probably wouldn't do this anyway, but just to make it clear, uh, it says systemic symptoms. Now, if the systemic symptoms are general, such as fever, body aches, fatigues, but the illness itself is minor, you're not going to use this. Note, this is a pretty high level. This is moderate or high. If it's a minor illness, you're going to use one of these instead. Finally, here are more terms used for elements within uh, problems addressed. Acute or chronic illness or injury that poses a threat to life or bodily function that's automatically high. Now, an undiagnosed new problem with uncertain prognosis is automatically moderate. So there's no diagnosis. They're not sure what's going to happen. This is a differential diagnosis this versus this, this or this um, in the documentation. The condition is likely to result in high risk of morbidity without treatment. And a great example of this is a lump in the breast. Well, that could be anything. That could be a fibroid or it could be cancer. So it could be a lot of possibilities. So that takes you automatically to moderate. So how do you decide which one of these to use for um, number and complexity of problems addressed? First of all, ask yourself, is there a final diagnosis for the patient? If the answer is no, meaning the patient has um, a new problem, no diagnosis, that, as we said, is automatically moderate. If, on the, on the other hand, the patient does have a diagnosis, then what's the level of the problems? Minor? chronic, 
acute. If it's minor, straightforward, one problem, more than one problem, low. If it's chronic, you have one stable condition, this is just one, it's low. If you have two, it takes it to moderate. If it's one with exacerbation complications, it's moderate. If it's severe exacerbation, it's high. Um, threat to life, high. So if it's an acute condition, uncomplicated, it's low. Complicated with systemic symptoms, it's moderate. Threat to life, bodily function, it's high. So here's an example of the element number and complexity of problems um, addressed. So office visit, Dr. A treats the foot ulcer of a diabetic patient. He also counsels the patient on the effect of his diabetes on the healing process for the ulcer. Dr. A doesn't manage the patient's diabetes therapy during this visit. However, the diabetes counseling is used as a component for selecting the level of medical decision making since it's a chronic condition that was addressed in the way of counseling during this um, encounter. So the next element in MDM that we're gonna talk about is the amount and our complexity of data to be reviewed and are analyzed. Now the first element focused on the patient's problems. This element focuses on the data that the physician or provider needs to collect to diagnose the problem and decide how to manage the problem. This element is divided into three categories. So we have category one, category two, category three. Category one is divided into elements A through D for review, order, cons consulting with an independent historian. We'll define some of these terms in a minute. Category two includes independent interpretation of the data. For low medical decision-making, this requires an independent historian. For moderate and high medical decision-making, this includes interpretation of tests performed by another physician. This is used only if the test is not uh, reported using a separate code. Again, no double dipping. Category three includes discussion of the management of a patient based on the data or discussion of the test results. These tests were performed by another provider or appropriate source. We're going to define that in a minute. The discussion must be a real discussion, not just an exchange of notes, like talking back and forth, even if it's through email. It doesn't have to be face-to-face, -face, provider to provider, but should be done within a day or two of the test and involve an actual discussion. So here's our, here are the, the levels of amount and complexity of data. So straightforward, minimal and no data, no documentation requirements are listed. Low is a limited amount of data, document at least one category, category one, any two elements or category two. Moderates, moderate amount of data, document at least one category. So this is at least one category under low. Minute moderate is at least one category. So this is from category one, three elements. Remember low was only two, moderate is three, or category two or category three. So category three is not in there until you get to it or high. It's not part of low or straightforward. So for high, you need two of the categories. Remember this was at least one, this was at least one for low and moderate. And three of the elements, A through D, or category two or category three. So you could do category one, three elements, or category two, or just category two, category three, but you need at least two of these um, categories. So here's some definitions. Appropriate source may include individuals who are not healthcare professionals, but may be involved, a lawyer, a parole officer, a case manager, a teacher. So that doesn't have to be an MD, Independent historian is a parent, guardian, surrogate, spouse, witness, other provider who provides a history in addition to the history provided by the patient. 
that's when the patient is unable to provide a um, history or is unreliable. They may be unconscious, they may have dementia, they may be in such great pain that they can't really concentrate. So it may also be used when uh, the physician wants to confirm the history that the patient has given. They may need more than one independent um, historian. So those do not require a physician. External notes, on the other hand, do require, this is a medical provider. It may be a provider who is not in the same group practice with the provider who's reporting the um, data element, or is in the same group practice, but of different specialty. It could also be a facility or a home health agency. So this one requires a um, healthcare physician, and this one requires a healthcare provider. Provider interprets a test performed by another provider or qualified healthcare professional. So some of these require, some of these are not healthcare providers and some of them are. So independent interpretation can be done as interpretation of a test where there's a CPT code for the test and interpretation is customary for the test. If you're doing a um, rapid test for um, flu, then that's, you can't really interpret, it's either yes or no, a rapid pregnancy test, it's either yes or no. If the uh, provider performed the test, then that's not an independent interpretation of it. So you see that appropriate source is specifically mentioned in category three, Categories one and two talk about external notes, independent historian, and independent interpretation is specifically mentioned in um, category two. So how do you decide on the level for this element? There are no requirements for a straightforward MDM, so that's not even listed. For low, you need one category, um, is from one category, for moderate, one category, for high, two categories. For low, two elements from category one, for moderate, three elements from category one, and high, three elements. So category two is a possibility for low, it's either, it's or, two elements from category one or category two. For moderate, it's category one or category two or category three. Note that category three first appears as moderate and it's also involved in high. For high, you have three elements of category one, category two, and category three, but you need two. So you need category one and three, two and three, one and two, whatever combination is there. So that's kind of how you can differentiate between the different categories. So here's an example. During one encounter, the provider ordered a urinalysis and reviewed the results of the urinalysis. The physician, the provider also reviewed results of a test for pelvic infection from other provider from a different group practice. This is two elements from category two and therefore is low. Order reviewing the test and ordering and reviewing the results of the urinalysis for one element. However, the provider also reviewed tests from another provider and that's also counted as a second element. So low MDM requires elements from any one category. In this case, you have two elements from category one, so it's ordering and review of the test and then one for our interpretation of the test from the other provider. Okay, the final element of MDM is uh, risk of complications. This is risk of complications and a morbidity or mortality resulting from patient management. There are no strict criteria for developing risk as for the ele other elements. Risk is up to the physician based on his or her training and experience. In fact, a condition may have a low prob probability of death, but still be at a high risk for a complication. 
a condition may have a high risk of a minor adverse effect of treatment, but may be at low risk for a complication. So the definitions of risk are based upon the usual behavior and thought processes of a physician or other qualified healthcare professional in the same um, specialty based on their training and experience. So here are the levels of service. And the levels are based more on example than counting specific elements. So straightforward, minimal risk from additional diagnostic testing or treatment. A low level of MDM is low risk from additional diagnostic testing or treatment. Moderate, uh, moderate risk, and it gives examples. So we have here prescription drug management. But then you look at high, it also mentions drugs. This is drug therapy requiring intensive monitoring. So that's the difference between the moderate and the high. In the moderate, you have a decision regarding minor surgery, identification of risk factors for a specific patient, specific procedure, when it's minor. In high, you have elective decision for elective major surgery and emergency major surgery. So that's the difference between moderate and high. Now, moderate is the only one that talks about social determinants of health. So the diagnosis or treatment is limited by social determinants. So if the patient is homeless, the patient is food insecurity, patient is living in an abusive um, environment, then that will affect um, diagnosis or treatment. In high, you have an addition decision um, not to resuscitate or to de-escalate care because there's a poor prognosis. So let, here are some definitions for the risk element. Again, you see in the definition of risk, the probability and our consequences of an event. Trained clinicians apply common meanings to high, medium, low, minimal, and don't require quantification, counting, okay? This is more up to the provider, um, unless the, uh, there is evidence-based medicine. A lot of um, medical specialty societies will develop um, evidence-based medicine saying you should do this. For this condition, you should do this, this, and this. And in that case, they'll use that. But generally, um, there's no counting. <clears throat> So for the purpose of medical decision making, the level of risk is based upon the consequences of the problems addressed when appropriately treated. Medical decision made related to the uh, need to initiate or forego testing, treatment, and or hospitalization. Morbidity, a state of uh, illness or functional impairment that is expected to be a substantial duration. Uh, mortality, risk of death, even with treatment, and social determinants of health, economic and social conditions. And I used this example before, food or housing insecurity. So a high level of risk includes drug therapy requiring intensive monitoring for toxicity. Remember that simple drug management is included in the moderate, but if there is um, intensive monitoring needed, then that takes that bumps it up to a high medical decision making. So this is what monitoring means. Assessing, looking for adverse effects, not whether or not the therapy is working, but are there adverse effects to the treatment. Monitoring, long term, short term monitoring a lab test. This is monitoring long-term at least quarterly. So if it's only done once or twice a year, it doesn't count. Monitoring using history or examination is not included in, in determining the level of MDM. Monitoring that affects the management options are included. So monitoring, oh, we found this in the monitoring and we're going to change the uh, treatment, the, how we manage this patient. That is part of um, this monitoring. So here's an example. Monitoring for cytopenia and use of antineoplastic agents between dose cycles. That's monitoring. 
short-term intensive monitoring of electrolytes and renal function in a patient who's undergoing diuresis. So what is not included in drug therapy intensive at high MDM? Monitoring glucose level during insulin therapy because the monitoring is to evaluate the therapeutic effect. Remember we set up here, it's to do presence of adverse effects, not whether or not the therapy is working. Annual monitoring of electrolytes and renal function for a patient on a diuretic because it is not performed quarterly. So it has to be quarterly. So here's an example of risk of complications and our morbidity mortality. A pregnant patient was in a motor vehicle accident in which she was struck by her airbag, resulting in possible injury to the fetus. She is admitted to the emergency room and taken immediately to surgery. This is high risk medical decision making because it's um, emergency major surgery. To determine the level of medical decision making, the three components, number of uh, problems, the data, and the risk are all put together. Here's a summary of the levels. Straightforward, minimal, number of complexity of problems, self-limited or minor, self-limited or minor, or stable, uncomplicated. Moderate is a little bit more, one or more chronic illness with exacerbation, so not uncomplicated. Or two or more stable, one undiagnosed new problem, one acute illness with problems or acute complication. High complexity is severe, which uses severe progression or threat to life or bodily function. So let's look at amount of complexity of data little data reviewed, and then we have categories one and, uh, or two. Moderate is categories one or two or three. So remember three doesn't come into effect until moderate complexity. And this one is one or two or three, but this is at least one category and this is two categories. So the risk of complications under morbidity, you have minimal, minimal, and then you have for moderate and high, you have uh, examples. And we talked about drug management versus drug monitoring, minor surgery, major surgery, emergency major surgery. So those are the differences between these. The three elements are needed to select a level of MDM. However, to report a specific level of MDM, you need to admit to meet or exceed, meaning more than, only two of the three elements. Examples are on the next couple of slides. So here we have complexity of data, low, amount of complexity of, amount of, complexity of problems, low, data, low, risk, moderate. In this example, we've met this one, we've met element one and two, so this is coded as low. It doesn't matter that the uh, drug management is moderate. Remember it says meet or exceeds at least two. So here's another example. Um, problems addressed is low, data is moderate, risk is moderate, so therefore you code this as moderate. Two of the three were dated and it were, were met, and it doesn't meet, matter that the complexity of problems addressed is low. Go so with the two um, that match. Now here's another one. We have um, risk is minimal, um, problems addressed is low, and data is moderate. In this case, this is coded as low. Remember that the uh, two of the three elements for that level must be met or exceeded. So this, this one is the one that exceeds. So you round it down to low. You can't round up, but you can round down. So this is exceeded 
amount of data has exceeded the necessary, so you still have, so this is low. And it doesn't matter that the risk is low. So if there's three of them, you do the three different ones, you use the one in the middle. So, wow, this is a lot of information. It's very confusing. Um, it's impossible to remember all the guidelines. This is why it's so important to make notes in your book. Abbreviating a long description of the elements may help. I would suggest circling, underlining, writing in your book this information. Use whatever method works for you. The idea is to easily differentiate between the levels. So for straightforward medical decision making, circle, underline, write in, one, self-limited. For low, two, self-limited. Stable, chronic, acute, uncomplicated. For moderate, you've got one or more chronic with exacerbation, two or more stable. So this is one stable, this is two or more stabled. And diagnosed new, acute with systemic symptoms, acute complicated. High, one or more chronic with severe problems, one or more chronic threat to life. So if you go through and just kind of abbreviate, kind of the CPT is a little wordy and you can kind of write in summaries of this. So far, that was for problems addressed. This is for amount complexity of data. Straightforward, minimum or none, that's easy. So for low, one from e either category one or two. Category two, document two, and then there's also category two. For moderate, you need at least one from categories one, two, or three. Remember, category three doesn't kick in until you hit moderate. Category one, document two, and then category two or three. For high, you need two of the three categories. Category one, you need to document three. The others only require two. And you also have options of category two or three. So you need to do any two of these um, categories. So let's look at risk of complications, morbidity, and mortality. So we've had notes for the other three elements. And so let's look at these. Straightforward, it just says NA, not applicable. For low, it's minimal. For moderate, drug man, do the difference, like drug management in moderate and then intensive drug toxicity in high. Minor surgery in moderate, elective major or emergency major in high. Um, social determinants is only in moderate. And then write somewhere in your book to report a specific level of medical decision making. Two of the three elements must be met or exceeded. So this will get you to um, help you. If you write in summaries of this stuff or put it on a piece of paper and, and paste it in your book, whatever works best for you. Okay, that completes this lesson. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Here are the books I've written on coding. They're available on Amazon. You can go to this link here, or you can just go into Amazon Books and type in my last name, T-R-O-P-I-M. If you want to contact me, if you have comments, you have something else in particular that you'd like to have me discuss, that's how you contact me. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video.